Welcome back to GoldStockTrades.com. Today we have a new and special guest with us, John Perlesa. John is the CEO of Phoenix Oro Gold Corp, which can be traded as FENX on the CSE. It also can be traded uh, in the US OTC on the pink sheets as FDVXF, and it also can be traded on the Frankfurt Stock Exchange as 8 F. D. Thank you, John, for being here with us today. It's such an exciting time for your company as you've received the uh, environmental authorization to drill uh, your gold project in Colombia. But before we start discussing your project, it's really important for investors who are new to the gold sector that have seen this price break out in gold to 2000 an ounce. To get a sense of what's going on in Colombia, uh, because many investors are not aware that the Chinese recently came in and have, have bought Continental Gold, the Beridica deposit, for I think over a billion dollars or maybe more. Uh, but we've been following it for a while, and I thought before we discuss Phoenix Oro, if you could discuss the background of Colombia of, of Beridica, the Continental Gold Beridica that was bought out by the Chinese, and that you have some of the the top, uh, the VP Exploration who found that discovery uh, working on your project. Yeah, yeah thanks, thanks, Jeff. It's real, uh, really nice to be here, and, and uh, uh, we appreciate uh, your interest and, and, and your listeners' interest in what we're doing. We think we've really uh, got something uh, quite exciting here. Uh, from an exploration perspective, um, and, and you're absolutely right. Colombia is, uh, for my money, one of the most prospective uh, jurisdictions in Latin America. Um, for many years, it, it was underexplored, um, but I think that's been changing for uh, for a few different reasons. Um, you know, if we if we look at the general area where we are located within the state of Antioquia. We are sitting on something called the Middle Cauca Gold Belt that uh, over the past 10 plus years has been one of the most prolific areas for discovery, new gold discoveries in the world. That includes Beridica, um, but it's almost uh, close to 100 million ounces of new gold discoveries uh, that have been identified uh, on this belt. Many of them are you know, in the, in the 10 to 20 plus million ounce uh, range so they're uh, of a style that is uh, they're very large. Um, there are uh, bonanza grades here, so we are really in in um, uh, you know as a, uh, an elephant country type type area for for gold hunting. Um, so we're in we're in a good good neighborhood. Um, we think um, that uh, we are. Probably best positioned as as the next uh, to to become the uh, next Beridica discovery, given the fact that we are the closest um, uh, gold exploration project to Beridica, um, located about 15 kilometers to the west, and um, you know additionally we are seeing you know striking similarities to to the style of of mineralization, the grades. Um, the the structures, uh, metal contents, etc. We'll get into that in, in in more detail in a moment. But um, yeah, for for those who who uh, are new to uh, looking at Colombia or new to the gold space, Continental is probably you know one of the most um, interesting success stories. Um, going back to late last year and and uh, in a transaction that closed early this year. Um, they have had uh, have been working on this for a while. A Canadian company made an interesting discovery several years back. Um, the the style of, of mineralization that you see is is stacked um, ultra high grade gold veins. And when we you know when we talk about high grade, arbitrarily we're talking twenty grams plus uh, per ton. Um, and in some cases much higher. Some of their intercepts were were four. 100 grams plus. Um, so it was a very exciting exploration story. When the engineers got involved, Newmont actually was was long believed to be uh, to be the takeout uh, uh, suitor because they had uh, become a, 
a major investor, a 19.9% holder in, in Continental. Um, when their engineers, and, and they were actually working on, on, uh, on putting the project into production, they had invested, I think, almost $600 million um, in, in the project to, uh, to get that to commissioning. Um, what the engineers realized was that this wasn't really just a, a story about high-grade gold veins. Those are always you know, interesting and exciting. Investors love to see those kind of numbers um, in press releases. But what really made it exceptional was the fact that between these, these vein systems was generally lower grade but still economic material um, that tied it all together. And, and it, it created something called that they called broad mineralized zones or, or BMZs, if you will. Um, in some cases, up to 40 meters in width, made for very economic uh, mining conditions. Um, so when um, you know this, this would drop your average grade a little bit, but it really significantly reduced uh, the, the mining cost because you can you can uh, use so much efficient mining methods. Um, Beritica, when it enters production this year, will be, I believe, the fourth fourth lowest cash cost producer uh, in the world. Um, so that's significant. They're going to be producing um, at at under six hundred dollars an ounce all in. And um, you know, when when this sold, when the transaction closed in January, gold was fifteen hundred dollars an ounce. Um, so significantly higher today, obviously. Um, but at that time, that transaction was worth $1.4 billion Canadian. And it was, it was Zijin Mining out of China who, uh, who swooped in at the last, last minute um, to, uh, with an all-cash offer to outbid, uh, outbid Newmont. So pretty interesting story. Um, we see all of those similarities um, with respect to what I just described, the type of mineralization, the, the, the high-grade veins, the material um that uh, the lower grade material that connects it all together giving us very similar looking wide zones um that that are have actually been visible uh, on our property because it's been uh, uh uh worked for for some time we have um uh, a partnership with uh, locally with a legal small scale mining association uh for several generations they've been doing um uh, legal mining on a um, in a very rudimentary fashion. They're not le allowed to use explosives, and they're not allowed to use uh, any chemicals. So they have this wonderful kind of thousand-year-old technology <laughs> that they build with mills in 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 creeks. To uh, they're basically water uh, water and gravity separation techniques. Um, but what they've done is they've been amazing prospectors for us. They've uh, um, you know discovered over a hundred small mines. They don't go very deep because of their, their lack of mechanized equipment, um, but they're very good at sniffing out high-grade gold veins. Um, so it gives us a really interesting window that I would say when Continental began, they they didn't have the same kind of visibility. If you look at what Continental had when it started, um, I think they had three or four known veins. Um, contrast that with us. We've mapped and sampled. Uh, over 80 veins um, on, on uh, uh, varying altitudes um, and say and up to grades as, as high as 146 grams per ton. So we have a lot more, more data um, working to our advantage than Continental had when, when they were preparing to get drilling. Um, and I think, you know, how are, how are we in a position to to make these comparisons or make these sort of statements. Um, the guy who discovered it, who led the discovery at, at, at Beretica, uh, Stu Moeller um, for Continental Gold uh, back, th back at that time, he's our VP exploration today. So there's nobody better positioned on the planet to uh, you know, make those comparisons, to make those observations. And you know, Stu will tell you he sees uh, you know, virtually an identical system um, and with, with virtually identical characteristics um, as when uh, he was preparing to uh, drill the first discovery holes um, for, for Continental. Um, Stu led the discovery, as I mentioned. He also drilled the first uh, 300 holes. So um, he, he has that experience under his belt. Um, he can make those, make those comparisons. Um, uh, it's not the first time he's seeing this. So he's, I think he's better equipped to, to analyze and, and, uh, review what uh, what we're um, 
uh, coming across and encountering in terms of mineralization. So we're really, really excited to uh, uh, to go, get going on this and, and start generating some some results. We, we started our exploration program earlier this year in January, actually before we were public. We were uh, we went public in May. Um, and you know, we started with the soil sampling program. We did some ground magnetometry. That the, both of those activities have generated additional multiple targets for us. What the soils are telling us is that there's much more. Uh, to to you know, to summarize very briefly, there, there's much more um, lurking. It seems under under the surface than we're able to see. Um, you never know what you're going to uh, going to encounter until you actually drill. But again, Stu, based on his experience. Um, believes that similar to to uh, what he encountered at Beritica when he drilled, um, we're going to come across uh, multiples of uh, uh, more times of, of veins than we can than we can visibly see um, once we start drilling. So uh, at, at Beritica, uh, I think he encountered three to four times the number of veins that that were visible on surface. So um, uh, and then and then the last uh, I think. Thing that we're really excited about is uh, the, the ground mag survey that we did has generated what appears to be a porphyry target um, that that outcrops very near surface or at surface rather. Um, we kind of stumbled across this uh, earlier in the program, took some samples. It's uh, it's absolutely potassic alteration, which is uh, the, the chemical makeup of, uh, of porphyry, uh, a porphyry system. And... Um, uh, it came back grading 1.1 grams per ton gold, which is uh, very uh, high, uh, a very uh, a very positive result, typical of of, uh, of the better grades in porphyry systems in Colombia and around the world. And the mag survey revealed a 3D image of uh, of an ore body uh, underground that starts at surface, goes to a depth of at least 700 meters. And is a uh, has an area of uh, one square kilometer uh, underground, and that's almost entirely uh, located on our property. So we're we're really excited to uh, uh, to be in a position to test that with the drill. Um, we have our targets all all laid out, and we're certainly going to tweak it a little bit so that we can poke a couple of holes into that uh, that new potential porphyry target. Um, and, and and see what that generates. So, um, so yeah, exciting days. A lot going on. Apologies for for rambling and and uh, <laughs> no sucking up all the oxygen here. But John, really got a lot going on. yeah, no, there's a great there's so much going on here. You're fully funded. You got a t 24 month, you know, almost three million dollar U.S. exploration and drill program that's just starting out. We just heard news uh, this morning that you've received the uh, the long awaited because of this you know the coronavirus the the environmental authorization to start drilling and this is what i think a lot of investors have been waiting for because we've seen all this data uh we've seen the right people Stu Moeller who's the uh, the VP of exploration at Phoenix Oro was the was the man who made the discovery at Continental at, with Beritica that was that's just been taken over by Zinjin, the largest Chinese, one of the largest Chinese gold producers. They paid over a billion dollars, and now they just recently announced that they're going to put a hundred and five million into expanding and upgrading uh, Beritica. I think just a week or two ago in their last uh, news release. Uh, so this is an exciting time. Uh, to be exploring for a new gold project. Talk to us, John, about getting this drill permit and, uh, you know, the interest that Phoenix Oro has. I mean, you've spent a lot of time getting this project ready to be drill ready. Could you talk about that and how much money has been invested and, and the timing, the significant timing of this for new investors it seems like it's a real uh, catalyst right now to finally be drilling. It, it is. Um, it, it certainly has. Uh, you know, we certainly have been delayed. I think perhaps that may have led to some skepticism um, as to whether whether it was actually going to come or not. Um, you know, but we've. Uh, uh, this was, I think, entirely related to the COVID scenario. Um, you know, we had our applications in. Uh, you know 
towards the end of November 2019, actually, uh, for these permits. And um, it's typically a four-month process to, to receive approval. There's nothing unusual about what we're doing here or how we're drilling. Um, you know, we're doing it in a very environmentally responsible way. Um, you know, everything is contained. There's not going to be any discharge, um, and, and and that's part of the part of the um, um, you know the baseline studies that they do. We're not. It's a it's an area that is not um, uh, has some vegetation, but nothing really. Um, um, you know, typically uh, or or uh, sensitive more. More than more than might be typical, um, you know. Uh, agriculturally, there's not a lot of activity there. It's really, really a mining area. We're close to a town called Frontino, where they've been they've been mining for generations. So it's it's really part of the local fabric. We have a lot of support locally. Um, but, but when COVID hit uh, in, in you know let's call it late March, the first when the first cases were discovered in Colombia, that was really when we were expecting to receive our uh, receive our permit. Um, and Colombia as a country moved very quickly. I think they had under a dozen cases and they shut, shut down the country in an, in an attempt to uh, uh, really slow the spread or stop the spread. Um, Bogota has by far been the city har uh, most hardest hit. And, and that's where the federal government uh, really operates and, and is headquartered. So um, government offices shut down. It's not a situation where um, uh, government employees have the ability to work remotely so when things shut down they, they absolutely shut down there there was a uh, um, you know processing on on a number of uh, permits not just for us but for everyone really uh, came to a, a complete halt um, they have begun uh, in certain areas to uh, to begin that process and uh, you know we were we were very actively in contact with um, Authorities on a number of different levels, as I mentioned, um, both locally, um, both within the Ministry of, of Mines and, and uh, uh, congressional leaders and the federal government. Um, we're really seeing a lot of support and enthusiasm for what we're doing. Um, we're creating jobs. Uh, we will be generating um, uh, royalty revenue. We'll, we'll be investing in the community. Um, it's a positive and a, and a win for everybody. And um, yeah, we finally had had uh, that success uh, uh, actually late Friday night over the weekend. So uh, it's really uh, uh, you know encouraging and, and, and a great feeling to, to see that across the line. As I said, we're, we're really, uh, really excited to be getting to this, to this next step. So today we're talking with John Corleso. John is the C CEO of Phoenix Gold, Phoenix Oro. Uh, you can get his. You can speak to email him at j carlesso j c a r l e s s o at phoenix oro f e n i x o r o dot com. You can also call the eight hundred number eight three three o r o gold uh, to get more information. You can f visit the website phoenix oro f e n i f e n i x o r o dot com. Uh, to get more information and download the latest presentation. They're also on Twitter. And John, thank you so much for being here with us today, for giving us an introduction and, to, and the background into, into Phoenix Oro. And uh, excited about the drilling program. And please keep us uh, updated on the Twitter accounts and on the website and any pictures or um, anything that uh, we really appreciate that as, as shareholders and, uh, and ha as stakeholders, I, I know that a lot of people are going to get interested now, uh, especially as the drilling starts here. Uh, so, uh, thank you so much, John, for being here with us today. Phoenix Oro, which can be traded as F-E-N-X on the CSE. It also can be traded on the OTC as FDVXF. Is there anything else that you'd like to uh, conclude with, John? Um, no, I mean, I think um, uh, I think we're really entering uh, the the most critical phase uh, where uh, you know we're gonna uh, we believe we're gonna going to de demonstrate uh, what we have. Um, as I said, it's uh, you know Baritica. Um, 
is the most obvious comparison to to uh, uh, what we believe we have. It's it's why it uh, I guess we're mentioned so often in, in relation to it. Um, it's time for us to prove it. Um, you know, we're seeing those those similarities. That's it's generally uh, believed to be uh, well when the transaction closed. They, their uh, uh, reserve was at 11 million ounces. Uh, uh, the general expectation or consensus is that that number is actually closer to 20 million now. I, I don't believe the Chinese have announced that, but they were in the midst of a of a resource update. So, I mean, if we can approach anything um, uh, close to that in terms of um, demonstrating that that type of of deposit where we are, uh, you know, that'll be very very gratifying. I think our shareholders. Holders will be will be very happy for what it means for the value of their investment, um, and um, you know what what makes that possible is this third dimension, the depth continuity at at Continental um, or at, at Beritica rather. Uh, they've they've drilled uh, so far to a depth of 1,200 meters, and and I don't believe have have um, found the bottom of the mineralization just yet. They're they were doing they were just about to be. Begin some uh, some deep drilling. Um, as I mentioned at the at the top, um, you know, we've identified uh, over 80 veins that we've mapped and sampled. We know exist, um, and we've traced these uh, the, the vertical depth of these to at least 800 meters. So it's another uh, confirmation in our minds and uh, data that, that that we have that these these. Uh, um, uh, these deposit styles are very, very similar. It's what allows you to pack so many ounces into small areas because you know they they tend to run so deeply. Um, and our first holes were really targeting areas again through families of vein structures that we know exist, but we've gone in, we've mapped them, we've sampled them, we have an under, understanding of uh, uh, of how they're laid out, and and you know our first targets are are uh, going to intersect areas um, that uh, we've sampled you know, 20, 30, 55 grams per ton gold. Um, so our expectations, expectations are quite high. Um, you know, we're, uh, we're keen to get started and uh, appreciate your, uh, your following. We certainly will uh, keep you and your, your investors, your shareholders um, informed and uh, hopefully sooner than later, you'll start to see what some of these, uh, some of these drill holes look like.